What's up everyone, John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo here with a full review for you of the Motorola Defy. It's a mid to high range Android handset. Let's go ahead and see if it's worth your hard earned money and if it deserves a place in your pocket. Let me run through the specs very quickly here on the Defy. It's got a 3.7 inch and of course that's diagonal capacitive screen with a resolution of 480 by 854. It's being powered by a Texas Instruments OMAP 3610 processor, which we've seen in many different phones with a uh, speed of 800 megahertz. It's got 512 megabytes of RAM on its backside. I put some little music in the background as I turn it over. Dun, dun, dun. It's got a five megapixel camera with flash. It's being powered by Android 2.1, which is now a bit of an antiquated uh, operating system and of course it's got Moto Blur sitting on top of it which we will most definitely uh, talk about. It's got a micro SD expansion card slot, it's pretty much what you'd expect from an Android handset. Uh, it's got two gigs built in but the big sort of white elephant in the room when you look at the Defy is its looks. It is an ugly 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 phone. They can say that it defies what a phone should look like. That was cheesy. But this is a classic case of function over form because its looks actually give it some additional functionality. Uh, this phone is water resistant actually. So if you look at the places where water might seep in, so there's a top 3.5 millimeter headset jack. You see there's a plug there. On the back where the battery door is, it actually makes a full sealed seam. And on the side, you can see these visible screws. Uh, there are three on each which makes the phone actually water resistant. I've seen uh, some reviews where people have actually thrown this phone in a cup of water uh, and it does actually work. So why would you want that? Uh, if you live in an area where you get a lot of rain or snow and you're outside a lot and you're worried about possibly waterlogging your phone, uh, you may want to look at the Motorola Defy. But before you go right out and buy one, watch the rest of the video because uh, a lot of things about this phone that you might like and not like. All right, so now that we got that out of the way, let's talk about call quality. Uh, I did a 20 call test, and this is an unlocked model. Uh, you can pick this phone up on a two-year contract if you're in the U.S. on Carrier from T-Mobile. Otherwise, the folks at clove.co.uk uh, hooked us up with a review unit. Uh, this model can be used on any carrier. So because it can be used on any carrier, I tried it on AT&T and T-Mobile, uh, and I made 10 calls from each. I had many more drop calls uh, on both carriers than I have on any other phone that I've tested recently. I had three drop calls on AT&T out of 10, and I had two drop calls on T-Mobile out of 10, uh, which is really unacceptable. If you can get through the drop call issues, which may be unique to just this review unit, you're going to have a pretty decent call quality. It was relatively clear. No white noise on my end, no white noise on the caller's other end. Uh, because of all of the ceiling that we have here, uh, the speakerphone and the grill that's sort of underneath the speakerphone is a bit covered, so you're going to get a muted speakerphone experience. So if you're someone, at least like me, who relies very heavily on speakerphone, I like to use it you know, when I'm sitting at my desk or even if I'm, uh, of course, in the passenger seat of a car, uh, it's not going to be the best experience for you. Something to keep in mind. All right, so let's talk about one of the other sort of things about the phone uh, that you're gonna use quite a bit, and that's the keyboard. Um, and let's go ahead and jump into text message, and I'll show you what this looks like. It does come preloaded with swipe, so for you uh, Android folks that like that, uh, you're going to have the option. So here is the Moto Blur keyboard. This is a 3.7 inch screen, uh, which is a relatively standard screen size for phones, and we've seen it on a ton of different uh, devices, and typing has been very good, but the Moto Blur keyboard does not make the best use of screen real estate. Certainly there are a ton of third party options, uh, but I have not enjoyed typing on this phone at all. I have relatively normal sized thumbs. As I put my finger over, you can see it's covering up a huge portion of the phone. So I've had a really hard time typing um, anything on it. This is typing. Um, it just hasn't worked out quite well. Fortunately, because it is an Android device, you've got an awesome uh, speech to text functionality. So if you've got big thumbs, you're going to want to look at either a third-party keyboard option, even if that's just the stock Android keyboard, uh, or you're going to want to learn how to use Swipe. Uh, something to keep in mind. All right, so let's talk about the browser and sort of the performance of the browser here. Let's go ahead and launch uh, Techno Buffalo. Since this is running 
uh, Android 2.1, you're not going to have full flash 10.1 support, uh, but you will have what's called flash light. Not like you wanna light up a dark room like a flashlight, but flash L-I-T-E, which is gonna give you a uh, flash functionality, uh, but not as smooth as you'd get uh, on a flash 10.1 device. So we've seen this processor used quite a bit, this TI OMAP uh, 3610 800 megahertz. But oftentimes the processor has been much better optimized for the software that it's running. Uh, not so here and truly results in a unfortunate sort of sluggy experience. Uh, so you can see here on the browser, uh, pinch to zoom still works uh, and it works okay. Scrolling is smooth, but not as buttery smooth as we've seen in other Android devices, uh, but it's certainly passable and we'll get the job done. You can do a little pitch to zoom action or double tap to zoom uh, and it will work for you. Uh, colors on it, you can see right here, there's some sort of bright blue colors uh, down here in the Facebook. Uh, look very muted, the screen is kind of blah, uh, pictures don't look terribly bright, the colors don't really pop. It's got an okay resolution, the 480 by 854, uh, but the screen doesn't do the best job with uh, images and colors. All right, so the operating system itself is again running Android 2.1 with Moto Blur. Uh, and I've talked about Moto Blur quite a bit ad nauseum, I suppose, uh, on a lot of other phones. I am not the biggest fan of it. And I'm not the biggest fan of it, not because of its functionality, which aggregates all of your social media contacts, but mostly because of how the user experiences and how it looks. I do not like this colored interface uh, with the phone and your menu button and then your contacts. I just don't think it works very well. And sort of the default icons that you get with Moto Blur, I don't think are very user intuitive. So you can see the Moto widgets uh, that you get and you can use. Now, if you are a big social media fanatic, you know, you may like some of these uh, widgets and plugins. I've just never been the biggest fan of them. I think there are a lot of third party widgets out there that do similar functionality uh, that look a lot nicer. Now, Moto Blur doesn't really take away any functionality, but I find myself getting rid of all the Moto Blur uh, widgets and functionality, or not functionality, uh, widgets and icons that are associated with it. Sort of get it back to as close a stock Android experience uh, as I can. So something to keep in mind, uh, if you've used another Motorola device in the past, you may want to uh, check out Moto Blur if you have access to another Motorola device. Uh, you might want to try Moto Blur and see if it's going to be for you. There are different versions, some that have these colored icons at the bottom and some that do not. So I'm going to run a quadrant benchmark test. And what this does is it runs it through a ton of different uh, benchmarks, I guess, uh, and gives it a score for performance. Now certainly the score is not always the most accurate way to gauge the performance of a phone, uh, but I do run it on all of my reviews so you can just get a, uh, a baseline and an idea for uh, performance. So I also have a task killer here, which I don't recommend using in general Android usage, but I do want to make sure that all the memory and stuff is cleared out uh, before I go ahead and run the quadrant test. So if you want to see this whole test being run, I'll put it at the end of the video, otherwise I'm going to jump right into the test. All right, so here are the results of the quadrant benchmarking test, and I'll move it up here so you guys can see it a little bit better. So the Nexus 1 uh, came out on top, uh, followed by the Motorola Droid X, uh, which is running the newest version, or was the newest version of Android 2.2. We've got the Evo, and you've got the Droid X running the older version of Android uh, 2.1. Then you've got our device, followed by the Galaxy S, older version, Nexus 1, Desire, Sony Ericsson Explorer, uh, Xperia rather, Moto Droid, and the HTC Magic. So these results, the more you run them, sort of the various results you're going to, uh, going to get. Uh, but generally, this has come out right in the middle. I actually ran this test uh, before I filmed this, and it was right in the middle. Uh, as well. So you're not going to get outstanding performance. You're not going to get the worst performance in the world. You're going to get kind of blah performance. Uh, if I was looking to get sort of a mid to high range, even a Motorola Android device, uh, I think you might be better served looking at something like the Motorola Bravo, uh, for example. Very similar specs, but I found it to have much, much, much better uh, performance uh, and screen for that matter. So while there's nothing wrong here with this phone, uh, there's nothing great about it either. It's sort of a average Android phone that's gonna ring when you need it to, it's gonna make phone calls, uh, it's gonna let you get online, but it's not gonna do anything that's going to amaze you. Uh, and for a lot of people, that might be exactly what you're looking for. Just a phone that's going to function. You're gonna get relatively decent battery life out of it, uh, and it will work, and I'm sure that Motorola will upgrade it to a newer version of Android, whether that's 2.2 or 2.3 is yet to be seen. 
uh, but it's a very forgettable phone. Uh, on a one to five scale, I give it a three, losing out huge points for the drop call issues, which again, might be unique to just my review unit. Anyway guys, I am John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo. This is a full review for you of the Motorola Defy. I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.